In 1990, I moved to California and to Berkeley, and I got a job at an electronic store called Uncle Ralph's. And when I was hired there, the manager, Timothy O'Hagan, said to me, you know, you remind me uh, of a guy who I think you're going to like. Uh, and he was talking about Fred Alley. And so when he showed up later in the fall, we did kind of immediately kind of like each other and kind of checking each other out. And um, so he gave me a, a, a cassette of stuff he was working on, and I gave him a cassette of some stuff I'd written. Sometime in the next year after that, he was going to write a new show for AFT, and he asked me to write music with him. So Fishing for the Moon was the first completely original show that he wrote, and I wrote the music with him. And the next summer they hired me to be a piano player, which they'd never had before. Uh, I believe it was $215 a week, and I had to bring my own digital piano. But uh, that show was Belgians in Heaven, which turned out to be a huge hit. I think that was really the first kind of crazy hit that AFT had. So it was a great summer, and uh, it kind of sowed the seeds for them offering me a full-time job as their manager, which I did in 95. When I realized that I had somehow found my way to the only theater I'd ever heard of that does outdoor, you know, original musicals, it was, I felt pretty lucky. It's like Rodgers and Hammerstein. When you get two people together, one of them is a brilliant writer and the other one is a brilliant uh, composer, that's a tremendous combination. And between Fred Alley and Jimmy Kaplan, uh, they, they, they're the heart of, of, the, of the American Folklore Theater's musical backbone. A bunch of naked lumberjacks chopping down trees. A bunch of naked lumberjacks. Bars. About two months before AFT rehearsals would begin, we tried to convince Jeff Herbst, the artistic director, to let us do this brand new show that had no script or anything. And we, I mean, we convinced Jeff to do it, and then we just wrote like fiends and it was it was really one of that's why i love this show so much it was such a crazy ridiculous happy time because fred was just really inspired i would get lyrics from him i'd pull out the guitar and you know write it and give it back to fred and to be honest we probably had about 80 percent of a show when we went into rehearsal it took us a while to kind of figure out the ending and but it was just a uh, crazy, wonderful time. In, in the year 2000, uh, we had the opportunity to revisit it. Um, Milwaukee Rep, uh, where we'd had a huge success with Guys on Ice, contracted with us to do a new production of Lumberjacks, casting it all, you know, starting from scratch. And so we wrote a, a lot of new songs and new material and kind of made the structure, you know, improved some things, which was a great, one of the great things that we had. And, was the ability to kind of go back and fix things because it's, you know, it's like people always, you know, we always joke about wishing that there was an undo button in life. And it was like, we really had that opportunity to kind of like, well, let's see if we can make this better. We've done, uh, we did a show, Guys on Ice, a couple of years ago at the Rep that uh, was extremely successful. And we're really thrilled that this one has been so successful and it's fun to be in Milwaukee. And you wrote the music for it? I write the music and Fred writes the lyrics and book. You have about six other shows that you've written together, and you say that they're funny and, and dumb and whimsical, and you say they're profound. I don't know if dumb is the right word to use in there, but... Goofy. Goofy. That was the word I was right. looking for. Yeah, well, I think of them as, you know, profound statements about love and life, of course. But and lumberjacks. Of course, and lumberjacks. <laughs> if you had to freeze one thing and say, this is what AFT is, to me it's that show, because it's, you know, it's about the woods, and it's just, it's just, it seems to just fit so perfectly. Well, the significance of Jimmy coming back to do these Friends concerts is that it's great to have Jimmy back in our community again. You know, we were very sad to lose Jimmy uh, from Door County, that is. He moved down to Milwaukee uh, for, you know, family reasons, and now he's living in Evanston, Illinois. And so it's really great to have a big soul like Jimmy back among us and having the opportunity here at Camp David to do a concert like this is, is a rarity. I wonder where I would go if I could go anywhere. 
uh, I guess a lot depends on what the next few, what happens in the next few years. I know that I would like to write more shows. I would love to have another show that people loved as much as Guys on Ice. But you know, you have to kind of get all the pieces together and finding the right collaborators.